Good day, I'm Mike from Hellwig. Today we're here doing an install on our front and rear sway bars for the 2016 F-150 two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. The sway bars that we're installing are made from our 4140 Forge Chromoly steel. These are both hot form bars. Up front, we're installing an inch and a half bar. Out back, we're installing a one-inch bar that's three-way adjustable out back. So we will actually be replacing the factory sway bar up front with our performance sway bar. And out back, we're adding a sway bar as this F-150 did not come with one from the factory. First thing we're going to do is remove this uh, mud guard, mud shield from underneath the vehicle so we can gain better access to the saddle bolts or the U-bolts that hold the sway bar to the frame of the vehicle. All right, now that we have the splash guard out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move up front to the end links. We're going to remove just the nuts on top of the end links. That way, we have minimal components that we're taking on and off the vehicle. All right, now that we have our end link nuts taken off and the sway bar loose and free from the end links, we can go ahead and move on to our saddle brackets, which we have four of. We'll remove those, the whole sway bar will come out, and then we'll proceed to install the Hellwig Performance sway bars. All right, we've got our factory sway bar off, so now we're gonna go ahead and prep our Performance Hellwig sway bar to mount on the vehicle. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our urethane bushings and our lube grease. We're gonna go ahead and lube up those bushings. The reason why you want to lube these bushings up nice so you don't get any squeaking or squealing odd noises when you're going down the highway. All right, we've got our urethane bushings greased and installed on the sway bar, our U-brackets on those urethane bushings, now ready to take it over to the front of the truck and bolt it up. We've got the sway bar ready to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hang the tabs on the end of the sway bar onto the end links to kind of help support it. Then from there, we'll go ahead and push our first U-bracket in place. Go ahead and get a nut and washer on there to hold it. While it's hanging, that'll give us what we need so we can come over and install the other side. When installing the front sway bar, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use the provided washers for the U-bolts to make sure that everything's held into place properly. You don't have any issues when you're going down the road. Okay, we've gone ahead and snugged up the U-bolts here to the frame rail. You want to leave them a little bit loose so it has a little bit of play in it. What we want to do is be able to adjust it so these end links are as vertical as possible, both passenger, passenger and driver side. What that'll do is ensure that it's set up properly for final torque. When tightening down your lock collar, you want to make sure that you're getting the equal amount of tightening on both sides of the collar. You don't want to over tighten one side or the other. What will happen there is you'll end up stripping out the collar, rendering it useless. All right, we have everything buttoned up here on the front sway bar. We have our mounting brackets on. Our lock collars are nice and tight. Everything is torqued to factory specifications. We're going to go ahead and take the mud cover, put that back up in place, move on to the back end. All right, we're all buttoned up with the front. We're going to move on to the rear sway bar. One of the first things we need to do in preparation to mounting the bar is we need to put our hourglass urethane bushings into our end links. What you want to do to ensure this goes in smoothly is put a nice amount of the grease that was provided in the kit on the bushing. In some cases, we're lucky enough to where we can push these bushings in by hand. So we're going to give that a shot. It's right in. So you notice it's even on both sides. That's exactly where you want it. If it is a bit stubborn or a tighter fit, you can always throw it into a vise and that'll help to get it in place as well. All right, once your hourglass bushings are set into the end link, we'll then go ahead and take the steel uh, bushing and put it inside of the hourglass. You'll notice it'll get a little tight on the way through even though we use grease. So once again, come back over to your vise. Slowly press it in. Now we have a finished unit. We've got three more to button up and we're ready to move back over to the truck. All right, now that we have both hourglass bushings in place and the uh, inner steel bushing inside of that, we can go ahead and put our lock nut on the male end of the end link. Quite a ways. And we'll go ahead and mate the female portion of the end link. Once we get this proper length, this end link is now ready to install in the vehicle. All right, first thing we're going to do to install this rear sway bar is we're going to fish in our mounting tab into the frame rail on either side of the vehicle. You'll fish this in through an existing hole on the frame, align it with another hole. We've got a clevis that this bolt will go through and hold it all in place. 
I've done a preliminary install where everything's nice and loose. Reason being is we're gonna need to adjust the end links to make sure that they sit at a 90 degree angle to the actual sway bar itself. All right, as you can see behind me, we have the sway bar hung on the end links. It's now time to put the U-bolts and saddle brackets on so we can go ahead and finalize the install. Okay, so we have the saddle bracket mounted onto the axle. Go ahead and bring the sway bar up. There you have it. We have a rough fitment. Recheck our alignment, come back, torque everything down, and we're good to go. All right, we've got the rear bar installed, as you can see. We have our U-bolts, our saddle brackets, and the bushings all in place. All we have left to do now is get it on the ground so we can do the final adjustment for the end links on the sway bar to make sure we have a 90 degree angle in relation to the end link of the sway bar itself. Okay, so we've got the truck back on the ground. We've already set our first end link on the driver's side. So it's just about perpendicular 90 degrees end link to the sway bar itself. Now that we have that set, we go to the other end link and we adjust that so it comes down to the same level. Once we have it at the same distance, matching up with the hole, we'll go ahead and put the bolt in, tighten it down to specs, and we're finished. We're ready to go down the road.